Okay, let's go over secant and cosecant. So secant, first of all, it's not in graphing form. So let's change it, factor out that two. Two comes out, you're dividing by two, so that's pi over two. Then we'll answer some answer blanks. Remember when you think of secant to think about cosine, it's the reciprocal of cosine. Okay, amplitude. Secant doesn't have an amplitude. So this is does not exist. Chances are we won't even ask it, but if it is asked, you write down does not exist. Vertical transformation, a one half in front of things, just like parabolas and everything else, is vertically compressed. Vertical is already written there, so compressed. Vertical reflection, it is not negative, so no. Period, just like cosine and sine, it's 2 pi divided by b, so 2 pi over 2, which is going to be pi. Phase shift, it's going to be left pi over 2, because opposite the parentheses, and vertical shift up 1. To get going, we need the cosine table and the cosine graph first. So this is a good time to practice your cosine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, right? Fill in the left column. Fill in the points that go with cosine without looking them up. Check yours with mine. Then let's figure out what math we're going to do. x divided by 2, because it's the opposite of times 2, minus pi over 2, and 1 half y plus 1. Try to do those on your own. Zero divided by two is zero, negative pi over two. Pi over two divided by pi, sorry, divided by two is pi over four, minus pi over two, which is pi over four minus two pi over four. Let's make an answer column again for this one, which is gonna be negative pi over four, which means I wanna convert that one times two times two to negative two pi over four. Pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is 0. Now I can see the gap. This was plus 1 fourth, plus 1 fourth. So I know it's going to keep going like that. Plus 1 fourth, plus 1 fourth. Do the y's. And remember that this is our cosine curve. So I'm actually going to switch to a dark gray when I start graphing this. This will not be the final answer. If I could go back, I would have done all those points in dark gray also. Okay, a little bit on the negative, all on the positive. So a little bit on the negative, all on the positive. Counting by fourths. So 1, 2, negative 2 pi over 4. 1, 2. Let's make this bigger. 1, 2. Negative 2 pi over 4. 1, 2. 2, positive 2 pi over 4. So we want, oh, 1, let's make it bigger again, 1, 2. Okay, so I'm going to plot these points in gray because this is not my final answer. Negative 2 pi over 4, 1 and a half. Negative pi over 4, 1. 0, 1 half. 1, 2 pi over 4. Remember, this is the cosine graph. You can make it dotted if you want, or you can make it lighter, but it's not the final answer. But that is the cosine that goes with the secant. Then we find our midline. Um, I'm going to use a solid pen. But the middle of this graph would be right here. And we rip it and flip it. So if it was on the midline, that would have been an intercept or a zero. Zeros become undefined. So in red for my secant graph, where cosine hits that midline, the green line, we rip it. Those are the asymptotes. Then we flip it. This point in gray is a point in red, and it curves up. This point in gray is a point in red, but we're going to flip it down, hugging the asymptotes. And then this point, flip it up. It does continue on forever, but we don't graph more than one cycle. This is our secant graph. Let me put some answer blanks. 
Okay, there's all the same answer blanks as before, but now we have asymptotes, and that's actually the first one I'm going to fill in. I just tend to naturally pick the far left of things, so that far left asymptote is going through negative pi over 4. So x equals negative pi over 4, but there's two of them inside one period. I see two asymptotes, so they, and you can just look at the gap to positive pi over 4. They happen plus or minus every pi over 2 n, period divided by 2 n. I do that one first because my domain is all real numbers, comma, x cannot equal exactly what I wrote down a second ago. Range, it goes down to negative infinity, but you can't touch negative infinity, so parentheses. And then it comes up to my y-intercept, which is at 1 half, or decimals is fine. It touches that bracket. Then it starts over, because there's a gap, it starts over again, bracket, at 1.5 or 1 and a half, and it goes up again to infinity, parentheses. Okay, relative min. It does not mean absolute min. I'm only looking at the red graph. Bottom of a valley, if I choose the far left one every time, that is my relative min. Even though it is higher than down here, the purple, my relative max, relative, if I zoomed in, that is the bottom of a valley. So relative min is happening at, again, you don't have to reduce, negative 2 pi over 4, plus or minus, there's one of those every period, so plus or minus pi n, and that value is 1.5. Relative max, even though it's lower than my minimum, it's the top of a hill, it's relative to the points around it, that is happening at 0, plus or minus pi n, it happens every period, and it is at 0.5. Even odd neither, well, let's do y-intercept. We got lucky. The y-intercept showed up in our graph. The y-intercept is 0, 0,5 or 1 half. That is one of my mins or maxes. So, and you should be able to look at this graph and see. If you fold it on the y-axis, every point would land on itself. This is an even function. Copy down number 2. Number two is already in graphing form. Answer those three questions. Pause the video. This is a cosecant graph. Cosecants don't have an amplitude, does not exist. Vertical transformation though, Vertical reflection is negative, so this is yes. I already took care of the negative. Vertical transformation is stretched because a 3 is bigger than 1, so it has been stretched. Period, 2 pi divided by b. There's an imaginary 1 for b. Phase shift, right pi over 4. And vertical shift, up 2. Cosecant goes with sine. This time I am going to use gray like I wanted to last time. Take a second, pause the video, fill out those sine points. What are the original points around the unit circle for sine? Check yours with mine. Then the math we're going to do, x plus pi over 4, negative 3y plus 2. 0 plus pi over 4, pi over 2, so 2 pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is going to give me 3 pi over 4. So it looks like it's pi over 4s that we're going to have. Pi, which is 4 fourths, plus 1 fourth is going to give me 5 fourths, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. Fill out the y values. Check your table with mine. Um, all positive x's, barely a negative y. Something like this. Counting by fourths, one fourth. I'm on shapes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to nine fourths. Um, it goes all the way up to five, so one, two, three, four, five, that should work, and negative one. 
plot those points, but I'm still using gray because this is the sine graph. Okay, there is my sine graph. Notice it's upside down because it has a vertical reflection. It's also relatively tall because it has a vertical stretch. So if we find the midline right through the middle of the graph, that's where we rip it. Midline becomes asymptote. So right here where it touches the midline becomes an asymptote. Right here where it touches the midline becomes an asymptote becomes an asymptote, and then flip it. This point is a point, but we flip it over. This point is a point, but we flip it over. See how many of those answer blanks you can fill out? Start with asymptote. I like to start with the one on the left. You can choose any of them. X equals, it's at pi over four, and it cuts this graph into two pieces, so it repeats every period divided by two, so pi n, two pi divided by two is pi n, that means my domain is all real numbers except x cannot equal that asymptote. Range goes down to negative infinity and it comes up and stops at negative 1 for a second. Bracket. Then there's a gap. I'm looking at the red, gap, red graph. There's a gap until it starts again at bracket 5 and goes up to infinity. Relative minimum bottom of a valley relative maximum top of a hill, fill those in. They only happen once a period, so two pi n. Even odd, neither. I have a pretty good guess. Vertical shift, right? As soon as there's a vertical shift, it can't be odd. Um, if it was even, my y-intercept would have to be a min or a max, and I can tell my y my y axis is too close for that to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in neither, but we are gonna find the y-intercept algebraically. So I'm gonna erase a tiny bit of this graph so I can do some work right here. You get the idea. Don't erase your graph. Okay, y-intercept. Plug in zero. The x is going to go away. I'm at negative pi over four plus two. Okay, unit circle. Remember how I hate cosecant? So I'm going to find sine of negative pi over four first. Negative pi over four is going to be in the middle of quadrant four. Sine is the y value. That's going to be negative root two over two. But the question was cosecant. So back over here, negative three times my answer it's the reciprocal of that and we have our chart of reciprocals the reciprocal of that is just negative root two you could also do the math if you want to if you don't trust me and then plus two so this is three root two plus two you don't get a calculator so zero comma three root two plus two or if you do get a calculator we don't want you using it it's some crazy number but that is the answer okay hopefully this helps and i hope you guys are doing well